the God that spoke in the beginning of creation. The God that declared the captives free from Egypt. The God that raised up dry bones with a command and stilled the violent waves with an order. That God is the same God whispering to us today. Can you hear God's voice? Welcome to the Well St. Timothy's online Sunday service on this, the uh, first Sunday in what we call ordinary time. You know, ordinary time is really a, an unfortunate uh, designation. I mean, these Sundays after Pentecost uh, are anything but ordinary time. You know, what we're going to see in the ministry of Jesus is someone bringing into the ordinary stuff of life extraordinary new chapters. What we're going to see in the readings from Genesis is a God who can uh, give birth to situations where barrenness is all around. And so in our own lives, as we worship together uh, today and in, in coming Sundays, may we be open to the God who wants to give us more than we, we ever desire and des or deserve. A God who can give birth to something new. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us build our house where hands will reach. 
reading from the book of Genesis. Now Sarai was barren. She had no child. Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, and his son Abram's wife. And they all went out together from Ur of the Chaldeans to go into the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. The days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you, all of the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai and his brother's son Lot and all the possessions that they had gathered and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in this land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country, on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west, and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages toward the Negev. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Psalm 33, verses 1 through 12. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous. It is good for the just to sing praises. Praise the Lord with the harp. Play to him upon the psaltery and lyre. Sing for him a new song. Sound a fanfare with all your skill upon the trumpet. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are sure. He loves righteousness and justice. The loving kindness of the Lord fills the whole earth. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. By the breath of his mouth, all the heavenly hosts. He gathers up the waters of the oceans as in a water skin and stores up the depths of the sea. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all who dwell in the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to pass. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord brings the will of the nations to naught. He thwarts the designs of the peoples. But the Lord's will stands fast forever, and the designs of his heart from age to age. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, Happy the people he has chosen to be his own. The gospel appointed for today is from the ninth chapter of Matthew. 
As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him saying, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand and the girl got up and the report of this spread throughout that district. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Have you ever noticed that wherever Jesus goes, that newness breaks in, that the way things are, are not the way they have to be, So often people think that, well, this is the way it is. Nothing can change it. No one's given me any hope of a better day. And then Jesus comes in and everything just keeps changing and new chapters keep unfolding. I mean, just look at what's happened after the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's gospel. After the Sermon on the Mount, the first thing that Jesus does, he cleanses a leper. Talk about an intractable situation, someone who has a disease that will keep them isolated from other human beings. There is a fate worse than death. And then Jesus touches him. And a whole new chapter begins. He is now reconnected to the community. A centurion then brings a servant to Jesus who is paralyzed. Jesus cures him. We then find out that Jesus casts out uh, demons from demoniacs. He heals people at Peter's mother-in-law's house. People who are possessed, people who are sick. You know, what happens is the word gets out that here is a guy who can make something new happen. And people want to be in touch with him. Jesus heals a paralytic. And then today he calls Matthew, the tax collector, to follow him. Of course, Matthew's issue is not any sort of physical malady. 
Matthew's issue is that he is in a dead-end life. I mean, what would it be like to be working for the occupied Roman power and ripping people off as a tax collector? Talk about a life with no meaning and no purpose, going home at night and thinking, what the heck am I doing? And all Jesus has to do is come along and say to him, follow me. And a whole new chapter begins. And then before we know it, he's once again in touch with people who've got serious physical issues. Someone whose daughter has just died and thinks the story's over. Why wouldn't you think the story is over? He brings her back to life. And a woman with a flow of blood, unclean, socially ostracized, Jesus lets her touch him. What we see as we read through all of the gospels is that Jesus just keeps coming into situation and giving people new chapters that where there is barrenness apparently, new life is discovered. Well, of course, this didn't just begin with Jesus, did it? The biblical story from beginning to end is about a God who's constantly bringing new life into very barren situations. And of course, the, the paradigmatic story goes back to Genesis. It goes back to Genesis 11, where we find out in a, a one line Sarah was barren, she had no child. And in that one line there in the 11th chapter of Genesis, we're told that the story of humanity is going to come to a close because there are not going to be any heirs. Well, they come to a close, except for the fact that there is a God who comes into barren situations and gives new life. And it's precisely to Abram and Sarah, who is barren and has no child, that God promises that they will be the ancestors of a multitude. You know, isn't it just absolutely extraordinary that week after week, we hear about this God who breaks in to people in Abram's time and people in Jesus' time, breaks into situations that seem all but over, stories that seem all but over, and gives them a new chapter that into their profound barrenness, into a situation where anybody in their right mind would just say, okay, this is it, this is all I got that something new breaks forth. What good news this is for us on this Sunday. What good news this is for the people who will be populating these pews on this Sunday. What good news it will be for people who will be worshiping out in our parking lot this Sunday. And what good it news it is for anybody who comes into this space to hear these words. You see, if you don't hear these words, you won't just imagine that this is possible. That what the biblical story does for us week after week after week after week is it opens our eyes to things we otherwise would not see. And what we know for a fact, what I know for a fact, is that these pews on any given Sunday often have many people in them who don't believe that a new chapter is possible. That they have come to that barren place in life where the story is over, it's going to be what it is, they are in despair, they cannot imagine that there's a power that can do infinitely more than we could ever ask or imagine. 
And then just every so often, someone who hears that word discovers that my gosh, maybe, just maybe something new can happen. And then before you know it, they've, they've got a new job that is giving them more life than they ever thought was possible. <coughs> and then suddenly they are in a new relationship when the old one was failed and gone. They thought they were used goods. New energy comes into someone who's lost all the energy. You see, this is the God in whom we live and move and have our being. This is the one who was made incarnate in Jesus, who simply everywhere he goes, whether it's into these pews or into the world out there, to other pews, and with a touch, with a word, makes possible the birth of a new life in a situation that seemed absolutely helpless. When we are barren, the paradox is we are, we are open to that life-transforming power. You know, if everything is, seems to be going right along, humming right along, we are not open to that. But when we wake up one day and say, my gosh, you know, I, I, I just can't do anything about this situation. Maybe precisely the moment that something new is possible. Sarah, I was bar barren, she had no child. And then God spoke. Matthew was a dead-end tax collector, and then Jesus said, follow me. The person with leprosy was isolated, and then Jesus touched them. Our God is a God who brings new life into the places where new life seems absolutely impossible.
dear God. Each summer season, you remind us that you never stop renewing our beautiful world. We rejoice in today's gospel message that you continually reclaim lost people too. Tax collectors and sinners, people long suffering with illness, and even those believed to be dead. We thank you for your steadfast love and mercy, O oh God. We must confess, though, that it is hard for us to believe our own lives could also be transformed. We try to be content with small pleasures and little lives when you desire us to experience genuine joy and peace. We struggle alone with illness, grief, and despair. We continue living with addictions, unhealthy habits, and destructive relationships that all keep us from being the people you have created us to be. We long to touch the hem of Jesus's garment and the hands of others for the transformative grace that can heal us. Help us seek, Lord, and allow us to find what we need. We also ask your loving care for all those who have lost their homes, immigrants, those in prison, survivors of war and natural disasters, the homeless, foster children and orphans, those living with dementia, who no longer know who or where they are. Sustain those living with health or economic crises or grieving the loss of loved ones. Inspire us to reach out to all those in need and for us to live with generosity of spirit and concern for others in our daily life and work. Empower us to serve as your hands and feet in helping you redeem our lives and our planet. Send your healing spirit to those on our prayer list, especially Alicia Cassini, Christina Van, Richard Fleet, Steve Althaus, Bill Baina, Jocelyn Monroe, Lauren Jones, Sharon Arnett, Jet Daly, David Dreisbach, Brandy Neerling, Alida Schatz, Lorraine Heiser, Andy Clausen, Felix Winternitz, Tom Keller, Tommy Lodcap, Grace Owens, Angela Berner, Salem Maisie Hart, Wendy Jones, those grieving the loss of loved ones and for your own concerns. We remember dear departed ones, especially those we now name before you. Heavenly Mother and Father, in you, we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As always, it's a privilege to worship with you on Sunday. Just a reminder that we have services at 8 in the morning on Sunday, 9.15 out in the, the parking lot, uh, weather permitting, and then, of course, 11 a.m. back in this space. 
We'd love to have you join us in person or join us online. Encourage you to share these services with somebody. You just never know when someone who's, you know, in one of those very barren times may be open to what God wants to give them. As we conclude our worship today, let us begin by praying in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord have the light of his countenance upon you this day and forevermore. In the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.